All right. One of the things you have to um, teach your children is how to behave at somebody else's house and how to behave when you have company. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it seems like that there's, you know, anything that's going to really go haywire as far as their behavior, it's it's always going to happen um, at somebody else's house or when you have company. Um, and, and parents, you need to work diligently at that. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to cover a couple things on the way regarding that. Um, you have to guard against being oblivious to your kids when you're in conversation. In other words, you know, Moses comes over and he starts talking to me and, you know, and I've, I've got these two or three or four little ones, you know, and all of a sudden I'm focused on Moses, but my kids realize daddy is not paying attention and daddy is distracted. So suddenly, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're swinging on the curtains and they're doing, you know, double flips over the couch and, and we're at somebody else's house you know, and they're knocking stuff over and, um, and, and, and what am I doing? Oh, nothing. Well, well, why? Cause I'm oblivious. I'm, 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 I'm talking to, uh, to Moses. Um, you, you've got to, um, you've got to be keenly aware of what your kids are doing. Um, I saw it the other day. It was amazing. I was watching one of our parents and it was just, it was accidental, but I got noticing that, um, uh, this one parent, uh, they were they were very tuned in. I mean, we're standing there talking, and uh, he is he's watching one or two of his kids, and he's he's talking to me, and he's paying attention that he's watching them like a hawk, and he's making sure they're staying close by. And I thought, okay, this guy's got it. He is on the ball. Um, I think sometimes people have this idea. They think, well, if if I'm talking to Moses, it's rude for me not to give Moses my total attention. Well. That's that's a wonderful thought. But um, you know, what's really rude is you're not paying attention to your kids and they're just going crazy at somebody else's house or they're going crazy, you know, in a public place. And um, and and you're you're not even clued in. You're you know, there that's not even in your focus. I, and most of this, I, I trust, you know, it'll be when they're little, you know, but but um you, you need to, you need to, you're, you're talking to Moses um, and your kids are in the room. Um, you should know where they are. You should know where they are. Uh, we started having trouble at a couple of the churches we attended. Churches are often, churches can be wonderful or they can be hot spots of trouble. And um, there were, there were some things started to develop among some of the young people and some of the kids. And it was, it was getting crazy and kids were getting accused of things and, and some of it was true and some of it wasn't. And, and it was just, it was getting out of control. And um, you've got to be able to look at your kids and say, you know, Johnny, Susie, Gertrude, Matilda, you know, Homer, you, <laughs> you, you've got to be able to look at them and say, don't leave this room. If you cannot do that, you got some work to do. And, 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 and praise God, just get started, get her done, start working on it. You should be able to say, don't leave this room. And you should be able to say, if you notice, okay, Henry's getting out of control over here. Henry, come on over here. And here Henry comes over. Say, Henry, I'm, I'm talking to Moses right now. Just, just have a seat. Now, if Henry starts having a meltdown and starts creating, okay, you got serious work to do because at home, and this is that whole thing of practicing at home, you should be able, you should be able, you should practice at home. You know, Johnny, uh, just, just have a seat for a little while. Why, mommy? That's the wrong answer, Johnny. Uh, it's, it's, you can say, yes, mom, or yes, ma'am, how are you going to do it? Yes, sir. Yes, dad. And uh, just, just have a seat, Johnny. And, um, and you, you begin to work with them to where there's no, no argument, no, no scrooching, no, uh, no ugly faces, no halfway climbing out of the chair while they're still in the chair. 
um, you, you know, you know, that's that's all their way of saying if I was a little bigger and I could get away with murder. I would I disobey you on purpose. That's what they're saying. You got to work. You should be able to say, Johnny, have a seat. And then I can continue talking to Moses. Um, you know what? What's rude? You know, you know what creates a poor testimony? People will dread to I, I say you, I'm saying you generically. We got people watching this. Um, you understand that. But people get to the place they dread to see some people coming because they know they don't keep track of their children. They don't want so-and-so's children in their house because they know there's probably going to be some collateral damage before the visit is over. That should not be. Um, let me tell you a story. It's a true story happened in this city, uh, not far from here. And it wasn't part of our church, but there was a Christian family and, um, they were, they were trying to help out another family that was having some real difficulty, not, not marital difficulty, but as actually health difficulties. And they wanted to be a blessing to this other family. So they, um, they brought this family into their, into their house um, for a little while and on several occasions just to, just to really be a help with what was going on. The family had, I don't know, we'll say five or six kids. And by the way, they, they, weren't, all, they weren't all, you know, seven, five, three. They had some that were 10, some that were 12. And, um, and they told us what transpired and, and on top of it, on top of it, this, this home, this, this guy had been pastor. Now his health was failing, but so, you know, you're, you're expecting something here. Okay. You're expecting somebody that really should be exemplary. Okay. But they brought him into their house and, um, and this, the lady was telling us, she said, she said it was chaos. She said they were, they were marking on my wall. She said they were kicking my wall. She said they were flipping over the furniture and she said, I was trying to be nice. And she said, I said, um, 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 you know, and you can, you can picture it. Some of you can picture it. And you're going, um, um, uh, you know, don't do that. Don't do this. And, and the lady took offense and, and here, here was her dumb remark. She said, well, my kids are more important than stuff. Now, if you don't think about that statement, you go, oh, yeah, well, I, I guess they are. No, 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 no. You are teaching those kids to be destructive. You're teaching them it's okay to raise Cain and tear things up wherever they go. Don't be intimidated by spiritually sounding statements. Like... Um, well, you know, kids will be kids. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Kids will be kids. Okay. So, so does that mean I can send my kids to your house and they can draw a mural on your wall? Is that okay? Well, kids will be kids. You say, but yeah, pastor, your kids are 35. Okay. Well, um, you know, I, I don't care if they're five or 35. Um. They shouldn't be writing on any walls, period. Like, man, for, you know what? You know how many times that would have happened in my house? Once, maybe twice. And lightning would have struck. You know, there, you, you understand this whole thing we've been talking about for weeks. There's things that should never happen. Let me give you an example. And I'm not trying to be crude, but here we go. Um, you know, I've heard this repeatedly in various families. You know, little Johnny goes to the bathroom and he's smearing poop on the wall. And they go, they go, oh, you know, that's just, it's just a phase. Oh, honey, we can phase that right out. <laughs> we can stop that like now. But, you know, these parents, they just, they just get this thing where 
they just um, they just don't want to do what needs to be done. Correct thy son. Kids will be kids. Oh, yes. And foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction, the rod will drive it far from him. Correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. Oh, I know parents that their kids are just a constant cause of turmoil and disaster and extra work in their houses. And somehow they just think it's normal. You know what? Correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. Wisest man that ever lived penned those words. God says you can have rest if you want it. Your kids are going to go to some some somewhere some house, uh, you know, or or they're going to be in church, whatever. Um, and um, you know, uh, you know, we a, a few times, and and it's really been it's really been pretty good here, and it hasn't been, you know, we we had issues there for a while uh, with with kids, you know, ripping around and all that stuff, but um, we we had to really tone it down. We really tried to work on all that, and and the parents have done really well. Um. But anytime a pastor or somebody makes noise about that, you know, you're at church, you know, and, and right away I say, when we were kids, we were not allowed to run at church, period, unless we were in the gym. If church had a gym, we could run. We were not allowed to run, around, not at all. And, and somebody says, well, you know, you know, pastor, that was just your generation. Yeah, okay. But um, do you realize how ridiculous it is to justify that. If, if you went to a Remembrance Day service on November 11th, you'd be horrified if everybody's standing there in solemn attention and your three kids decide to run laps. Um, think about this for a minute. Think about this for a minute. Our children have all week to play and to run and to be crazy. They do. And you got to let them run. You got to let them play. You got to let them be crazy. You know, that's part of being a kid. They've, they've got five times more energy than, than we have. And, and, and that's fine. But, um, you know, they got, they got all week to do that. They can nicely and respectfully play. They can, they can play a little more calm. Or they can sit for a few hours. And you know how you know that's true? And I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because, you know, but, but I've watched kids. I've watched I've watched kids in this church. Um, if we handed them a tablet. And a cartoon was playing, guess what? Suddenly they can do. They can sit for an hour. And they don't have to go to the bathroom. And they're quiet as a church mouse. So, you know what? It, it, it can be done. You know, and but, you know, you you've got to you've got to teach them. You've got it. You've got to really, really declare war on that. Um, what do you do when your kid looks at you and says, um, oh, oh, mommy, I forgot. Um, you know, um. You, you told him to uh, to do something and or you told him not to do something and um, and 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 you're you're going to you're about to lower the boom and they say oh I I forgot well some of you have heard me say this on other occasions but m my mom really had a cure for that we'd be standing there and she would have the uh, the discipline weapon in her hand and we would be having a conversation and she'd say don't you remember? that I told you not to do that or not to go there, whatever. And I'd say, no, mommy, I forgot. And she'd say, well, let me jog your memory. Wham, 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 wham. And of course, you know, my mom was about to lose it at that point. Do you remember now? She'd say, yes, mommy, I remember. Oh, I forgot. You gotta remember the, these kids are masters. Just it's just the fall in nature, you know. Uh, um, 
Adam, it, it's her fault, Lord. It's Eve. Eve, oh, it, it's the serpent's fault, Lord. You know, it, it comes naturally to us. Let me mention a couple other things. Um, you should teach your kids, you know, when they're small, okay? A lot of you guys, you're going to have kids down the road. You're going to observe things as you watch. Many of you already have. Your kids should be taught not to climb on other adults or teens. They should be taught not to get in their faces. They should be taught not to enter into adult conversations. It's just really rude. It's really rude. You got three adults and they're talking about, you know, something. And, and here comes, here comes Johnny. And, and he's going to think he's going to contribute some wisdom to this conversation. And he doesn't even have a clue what he's talking about. And, 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 and it wouldn't be bad if Johnny just made one comment. But, oh, no, now he's got the adult's attention. There are kids that love that attention. And you need to rain on that parade. Um, you know how it is? Here's this little kid. And he's always jumping in adult conversations or he's getting in adults' faces. And most people, most church people are really nice and um, they won't say anything, at least not in your presence. But they walk away thinking, man, that was rude. Man, why don't they have control of those kids? And you're hurting your child and it will be a blot on your testimony. Let me mention that thing of, well, 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 I, I forgot. Um, here's another trap that you'll, you'll fall into if you're not careful. You got, you just, you, you got to, you got to just pray Lord will help you. But some of this is if you realize parents, God, God made you the parent. Don't be afraid of your kids. We we've reached this. I know there's extremes. There's, there's the abuse of extreme and, and we understand that, but there's the other extreme that in our society it's drifted into this thing where people are, um, they don't want to hurt their kids' feelings, and they, they, um, they want, they, they want, um, they, they want their, their, their kid to really super like them. Have you ever observed this? Many of us have observed this. You know, the kid that is really happy and the kid that really loves its parents is the kid that gets disciplined. Those are the ones that are happy. Those are the ones that are content. Those are the ones that really love their parents. Um, you tell Johnny, don't, don't pick the apples on the apple tree. So next week, Johnny goes out and you catch him picking the apples on the apple tree. So, um, so you remind Johnny. Johnny, now maybe you forgot. But, you know, I, I told you, don't pick those apples. Oh, oh, yeah, Mommy. Yeah, I forgot. Well, three days later, he's back at the apple tree again. Now, and here's what here's this pitfall. You know, he's not blatantly. He's not being sneaky. He's not he's not uh, he's not doing something devious. It just looks like he's forgetting. How many times are you going to let him play you? You know, after after you've told him two or three times, you don't need to remind him anymore. Oh, look at that. Johnny's at the apple tree. Hey, Johnny, come on in here. Johnny comes running, and he sees you standing there with the, the weapon in your hand. And, and you say, Johnny, bend over. Uh, what? Oh, oh, he's going to play the innocent card. <gasps> what did I? Johnny, you know, I, I've told you three times, stay from the apple tree. And you know what? I'm just going to help you remember, stay away from the apple tree. And, 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 and you, you do that discipline thing. And um, and you don't you don't keep reminding him. You know why? Because Johnny should know. You know Johnny Johnny Johnny. The last three times you had company, he was getting in the adults' faces. He was climbing on the teenagers. And you know what? Um, you you kept reminding. There's a time when you go, okay, I I don't need to remind this dude anymore. I need to help him remember a different way. Because you know what? Johnny knows. He's just playing.
All right. I want you to look with me at Colossians 2, 8 real quick, and we're going to finish up tonight. Colossians 2, verse 8, it says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Um, you know, one of the things that, that sneaks in, and of course, you know, we've sort of been covering this in one way or another all along, but you get these, um, you get these ideas that somebody's passed on to you or somebody will tell you, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's just a philosophy that they have. And um, so I'm going to throw one of them out at you just for a few minutes. And um, and it's very typical of, of a wrong way of thinking. And that is you, you've heard some people say, well, you know what? When my when my kids are 18, you know, um, I'm just I figure they need to be on their own. And it's that that thing of, you know, I'm going to kick them out when they're they're 18. Um, and some people do that. I've known guys that do that. I don't know that you're going to do that. But that brings up a thought. And the thought is that there is a magical age for certain things. Um, oh, oh, you know what? Jo Johnny's Johnny's 10 years old. Sally's 10 years old. You know, I I know I don't spank him anymore. Uh, Where did you find that in the Bible? Could you help me out with that? Um, who, who set that number? We were talking the other day. We It's been fun to watch some of these kids as they're driving into the parking lot, driving their parents' vehicles. And uh, and I've been giving them a hard time and. And um, uh, Alex Bay rolled in the other day, and man, it really does. It looks like you got a kid behind the steering wheel, and he's rolling in, you know. And um, so I was talking with uh, Alex and Chad, and you know, here in this province, um, you can—I uh, think you can get your learners at 14 years old. Is that correct? Man, I was in Mississippi years years ago, and I was out out in the boonies, and I, I saw this pickup truck, and, and it looked like. 12 year old kid behind the steering wheel and i'm just going wow he's watching it um you know 14 to me that's you know that's wow that's amazing that's young where i grew up when i it, it was 16 but the difference was you could get your learners you could take the test at 16 and then a month later you could take your drivers so we sort of had the best of both worlds i was talking to um chad i said what's it like in korea he said you have to be 20 years old 20 years old. Um, I never felt compelled. Uh, most of my kids got their driver's license when they were 18. And I wasn't trying to be hard to get along with it. It's just, just sort of the way it panned out. Um, you got to watch this thing where you, you think, oh, they're, they're a certain age now. And um, well, now that, now that, He's 16. Now that she's 16, they get to do this or that. Um, the number, the number means nothing. Did you hear that? The number means nothing. Um, oh, she's 14 now. So we pretty well have to let her do this or that. Says who? Says who? Suddenly, and this is what you got to watch for. There's an invisible pressure to let somebody do things, do something that in your heart you feel they're not ready for. Privileges, if you're going to write a statement down, I'd write this one down. Privileges come with consistent, mature behavior, not at a certain age. Now notice I didn't say privileges come with mature behavior because Anybody can do good all of a sudden for a little while to get what they want. Privileges should come with consistent mature behavior. Somebody says, you know, well, you know, I, I want them out of the house when they're 18. Okay. Are, are they ready? Are they ready? Well, Johnny's 14. I got to let him drive. Um, is he ready? Is he ready? 
Sometimes this number thing is just an easy way out for a lazy parent who wants to be done with their responsibility. And of course, some parents are just the opposite. They try to keep them at home forever, you know, and we're not advocating that. But but the question is, what if they're not ready? Well, Daddy, I want to get a job. Why well, I remember crossing that bridge with my dad. I remember one time I went up to my dad, a girl down the street. I was living out. We were living out the country. And um, I was going to public school till I was in ninth grade. And there was a girl, you know, her dad, her dad was the butcher at the little country store. And they were a nice family. And um, but I went to public school and I knew what was going on. But I figured daddy didn't know what was going on. They were going to have a party. She was going to have a birthday party. But this wasn't a cake and ice cream party, if you know what I mean. This is one of those guy girl parties. And um, and I thought, wow, here's my chance. Here's my chance. So I said, Dad, I said, they're having a birthday party for Jenny. Can I go? Well, Daddy knew Jenny's dad and Daddy knew Jenny and Daddy didn't think anything bad about them. But thank God for a dad who wasn't afraid of me and who would listen to the Holy Ghost and his own common sense. I was 14. My dad said, well, son, he, he thought about it for a little while. I appreciated that. He said, well, son, he said, you know, he said, you're getting to that age where some of these parties, they're not just cake and ice cream anymore. He thought he was informing me. He said, you know, some of these parties, they're not just cake and ice cream anymore. He said, uh, he said, I think we're going to pass on this one. You know what my respect for my dad did? It went through the roof. I thought he's not as dumb as I thought. And he wasn't mean. He wasn't trying to be mean. He didn't dress me down and accuse me of false motives, although my motives were devious. He just said, no, son. He said, I think we'll pass. You know, um, um, I remember going to my dad. A lot of the kids were at the same. We lived in that same place. A lot of the kids, you know, the working age was supposed to be 16, but there were some of the grocery stores that would hire you when you were 15. And I remember going to my dad saying, Dad, can I get a job? You know, we, we were a really a lower middle class family. We never had a lot of money. It, and we got by. We were great. Everything was, was good. But we didn't have much money. Dad was always pouring money into the house because it was a wreck. And... Um, I said, Dad, can I get a job? Can I get a job down there at the store? And Dad said, let me think about it. See, I was, I was 15. Other kids were doing it. There was no scandalous things that Dad knew of. And he came back to me and he said, son... Now, this is just what he he felt for me. And see, here's my point. You're gonna, parents, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be clued in, and you're gonna have to be in touch with the Lord, and let the peace of God rule in your heart, and God will help you. It, and and what one kid is ready for at twelve, another kid may not be ready for till he's eighteen. That's just that's just the way our kids are. Some kids are ready. They they don't all mature at the same pace. And my dad said, son, he said you're gonna be in that work world soon enough. He said, I'll give you some jobs around the house. And, and there was a lot of work that needed done. He said, and I'll pay you some money to do the jobs. And I was happy with that because when you got no money, any money's better than no money. And I said, okay, sure enough, we'll do that. And he kept his word. Every two weeks, he, he paid me some money for some of the jobs I was doing. And, um, but you know what that was? He wasn't intimidated by me or by my age or by what the other parents were allowing their kids to do. He wasn't worried about that. He was taking a good hard look at me and he was talking to the Lord and he was making a conclusion. And he said, oh, son, I don't think you're ready for that yet. It's a wonderful day when uh, when you can uh, think like that. Um, I know you know this and we got good young people in here. I say that sincerely. But young people today are generally, generally, less mature than at any other time in history. The Prudential Insurance Company put out a statistic a number of years ago. 
I know this would not apply to many of our young people. So, but this was their statistic. They said the average young person today is not stable, ready to hold down a job, ready to shoulder lifelong responsibilities now in this day and age until the age of 30. Have you looked around at this partying bunch of wild animals that we have walking our streets and driving trucks around this place? That's just about right. They're 30 years old. They've been through umpteen partners. They've had abortions. They've had babies out of wedlock. And they're still not ready to settle down. Our forefathers, it was much earlier. But you see, they grew up fighting to survive. So at 14, 15, 16, 17, their level of maturity was a whole lot different than the average game-playing, computer-driven young person of today. So I'm going to stop there. Um, and I just, I just want to encourage you, don't get caught up in that thing where you think, okay, well, Johnny's this age, you know, Sally's this age. I've got to. No, 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 no. You don't have to do anything. You know what? When they're ready, it'll be evident. They'll be consistent, consistent mature behavior and then you can safely hand them that privilege let's pray lord bless these things we pray lord may they be helpful father we pray in jesus name with your heads bowed and your eyes closed i want to give you just a minute to talk to the Lord. If the Lord spoke to you about something, why don't you talk to him? Lord, bless the truth. May we be wise, Lord. May we look to you. Lord, may, may we not be driven by some fear, Lord, that doesn't match what you said. Lord, may we know that we are safe if we'll just follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.